To frame this discussion, I'm going to put up a chart here. I'll put it on my terminal that we can look at, okay. something you know well, which is basically the trade with the United States and China. And what it shows is the blue lines show the amount we import from China, which is way up there. The amount we export to China, somewhat more modest. And when you have the yellow line is the $250 billion, if they go ahead with the $200 billion, right. which, by the way, is well above, actually, what we export to China. So what's going to happen today? Well, I, it's not clear if the administration is going to move immediately to implement the tariffs, but clearly they're holding that out there as an incentive to try and get the Chinese to come to the table and negotiate. And I think one of the, one of the great ironies of this is the situation is in a, a perfect one, actually, for the administration to really get some significant concessions from the Chinese. The Chinese are moving much more to a consumption-oriented economy where they want to import more. And for the administration, what they want to do is export more. So it seems that there could be a deal there. The question really is whether the administration is prepared to deal. Well, well that is the question. We talked to Wilbur Ross, the Secretary of Commerce, last week and asked him specifically about the sequencing on this. Right. And he essentially says, I think the president would like to wait and see how the Chinese respond to increased tariffs. Is that the, the, the game, as it were, the negotiating game here to say, let's let the Chinese go for a while? Well, I think the tariffs very much are a tactic rather than part of a comprehensive strategy. And it seems that it's been one of the administration's tactics to try and first raise tariffs, then try and negotiate. And we've seen that with NAFTA. We've seen that with Europeans and steel. And we've seen that clearly with China. But what can the Chinese do? As David was pointing out, really they don't have as many U.S. imports in order to retaliate. So what are some viable options that they could use that wouldn't be detrimental to their own economy, such as unloading treasuries would be detrimental to them, right. devaluating the yuan would be such a case as well. So what is the least of all evils for them? Well, I think they've been looking at this very clearly since the administration came into office and has been threatening this. But they can certainly sta start changing their trade patterns, which will have a significant impact on the U.S. They can stop approvals of U.S. securities firms and give those approvals to the Europeans and the Japanese. They can change where they're importing their agricultural products, and we've already started to see them doing that. Um, so I think over time, if the, if the tariffs do go forward, we're going to start to see trade that moves away from the United States and the Chinese really making a major push to diversify where they're bringing in their products. To your point, we have this terminal on the GTV Go library that shows exactly that. Yeah. China is exporting to these uh, Belt and Road countries, to those 70 plus countries that are actually working with them in order to build this huge uh, link between China and the rest of the world. We are seeing that in the red bars that continue to increase. Will this just strengthen China's position within the region and squeeze out the United States? Is that a threat? We're seeing Xi Jinping being very active in building up relations with other countries. Uh, he just had the African leaders in and is pledging to increase trade with Africa. And just a month before that, he was working with the Middle Eastern leaders and pledging that they would start free trade agreement negotiations. And his first trip in office was to the Middle East and Africa. So there's no question they're pushing to diversify. Now, it's not the United States. It's not Europe. Those markets still aren't going to give them the kind of export market that they need to have to continue to grow at the pace that they are. But there's no question that this diversification is going to happen. We just got some trade deficit numbers out this week for the United States. And if anything, it points us in the wrong direction. I have another terminal here that actually shows yep. our deficit, trade deficit with China, which is getting worse. It's not getting better. So that's, right. if that's the president's goal. It's not working so far. Yep. But do we know and do the Chinese, perhaps more important, know, is that the president's goal? Is it the trade deficit or is he going for more fundamental reform that a lot of businesses say we do need? Well, there's no question that we need fundamental reform in China. And I think there are plenty of people in China who would agree with that. I mean, basically, there was no significant market opening during all of Hu Jintao's tenure. And in Xi Jinping, the focus was reforming the economy, but not opening it up. Since his second term, they've made a lot of announcements about the fact that they're going to open up in a number of sectors beyond what people talk about in financial services, but we're seeing in agriculture, many areas where the U.S. is very competitive. The question is, how quickly will they move to do that? And you understand President Xi certainly far better than I do. Uh, he, has, <laughs> he has various jobs in front of him right now. Right. One of them is to deal with this trade problem. Another is to worry about Chinese growth, fundamental growth. That's right. So does that reform impetus, is that at war with continued growth, or can it help him with continued growth? How does he see it? Well, I think the outside pressure has been very helpful for the Chinese to be candid in helping overcome some of the domestic uh, barriers 
for them to move. And they needed to reform the state-owned enterprise sector. And this push and pressure from the outside helps them do that. But over time, they can't survive with ongoing tariffs on all of their exports to the United States, which is going to be, the, it's, you know, still one of their largest export markets. What will be the red line for President Xi to actually backtrack on those reforms if he sees continued trade tensions hurting the economy? I think if the economy really starts to tank in China. I mean, already we see that they're starting to take steps to subsidize some sectors. But he needs to continue to push forward, as you were saying, David, with his own domestic reform agenda, with deleveraging, with taking care of some of the debt and the financial risk that's within the system. And if that starts to be threatened, he, they're going to have to take action domestically. One last question on what are the options available to President Xi. We talked earlier with Mark Mobius, who yeah. really knows emerging markets. And he said he thought if we went ahead with the $200 billion of goods subject to tariffs, that in fact the Chinese might well let the RMB devalue to eight and admitted that if that happened, he said it would be blood on the, on the floor. Is that realistic? Might the Chinese government let the RMB devalue that one more far? Well, so far, the Chinese have actually been very good about trying to maintain a certain floor in these negotiations. They've tried to make a very clear distinction between their, their challenges with the U.S. government and their challenges with U.S. companies and encourage U.S. companies to continue to come, to meet with them, to woo them, and, and to manage the yuan. But if the economy, again, if, if, if Xi Jinping's political base is starting to be threatened, which comes from the growth of the economy, they will be forced to take domestic action. Just quickly, if you can, if the U.S. doesn't reach a trilateral agreement this week or this month, right. does that give a leverage to China? Uh, I'm not sure if it gives leverage. I mean, it's been very hard to predict why the administration has taken the timing of it does in announcing these tariffs. Some of it clearly is domestic politics. Some of it seems to be when the president decides he's ready to announce it or not. And I think there is a general belief in the U.S. business community and with the Chinese that ultimately this deal is going to be done by the president himself. And so it's then when is that opportunity going to come that he'll have a chance to talk to President Xi and come out. But if they do this, this deal, just one last thing I'd like to say. The offer that's on the table even today is better than any offer of the past two administrations. Mm -hmm. And so if we're able to take even what's on the table with China today, and we know that we're going to get more from what the administration says that it wants, it's going to be a very good deal for U.S. companies.